Fantastic. Okay, now that we're all set. Um, so I would like to call this meeting of the Woodstock Village Trustees to order on Wednesday, September 14th at 6.32 um, p.m. Um, the first item on our agenda is an interview for the Historic Preservation Committee, Wade Treadway. Come on up, Wade. Can you sit up here so that we can get you close to the microphone, please? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh, so, uh, so Wade, tell us um, a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the commission. Well, my whole career has been primarily dealing with historic buildings. Okay. Um, starting very early on with a building career and uh, has branched into many different levels of that. And uh, by the time I settled in Woodstock, which was 32 years ago, um, which was for a restoration project, um, you know, I had quite an <clears throat> extensive background of restoration projects all over New England. Uh, we were based out of northern Vermont. I uh, had a crew of 28 and a shop and multiple projects going on all around. So it's always been a strong focus. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Woodstock, um, you know, fairly quickly, I became involved with the Historical Society, uh, was president there, and uh, then got on the Planning Commission, and uh, was very much um, intrigued with Woodstock and Woodstock's history, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just everything that I saw there. Okay. And um, I then went into real estate, which, you know, has been my primary focus for probably the last 20 plus years. Okay. And recently I've started slowing down a little bit with that and wanting to get more involved. Okay. Um, consequently, went on the uh, Town Development Review Board, uh, which I'm now chairman, and uh, looking to get more involved back into the town. And, you know, I feel that I have <clears throat> such an extensive background in uh, historic structures. Um, I've worked with preservation societies and all over New England in all capacities. Um, I quite often get calls from various communities throughout New England, um, particularly historical societies. Uh, when a demolition permit's been taken out on a historic structure, I get called in to um, help with the process. Many times that involves, you know, clashing heads with developers, with preservationists, and, and uh, I find that's intriguing to kind of get in the middle and find a common ground for both sides. And uh, as I say, I do that on a continual basis and do a lot of uh, consulting, et cetera. And was very intrigued when um, I saw that, um, that the uh, preservation committee was being formed. Um, you know, one of the things that I worked <coughs> with a lot when I was on the planning commission was the, de the design review district, and uh, that was interesting <laughs> <laughs> um, because there are a lot of things, <coughs> particularly germane to Woodstock. Woodstock obviously has a very strong uh, image, mm -hmm. very strong presence, and um, you know, why is that? What is it? And what's the underlying element there? Uh, when I was president of the Historical Society, we were uh, given both the DAR house across the park here, also uh, the Lightburn house across Elm Street, and both of which we put uh, facade easements on um, to help in the preservation, work with the owners of those properties to make sure that um, there was a continuance. And yet, I find, um, you know, over time, uh, things get diluted. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, fondly one of my first major fights, shall I say, um, was uh, the village, or the town selectmen, actually, at that time, were uh, looking to replace the roof on the covered bridge. And they said, well, you know, times are a little tight. We want to put standing seam on it. And I said, no, you can't put <laughs> standing seam on it. And uh, 
George Finn and I had quite a battle, and I ended up winning that Shakes should go back on it because that's what it's always been. And, you know, I always look at a lot of these things taking place, uh, particularly an instance like Standing Sea Movement. The more people that start to have it, all of a sudden that becomes a standard. Yeah. And it's like, well, what has that done for us? Mm -hmm. And so I find, um, you know, the uh, formation of the Historic Preservation Committee to be uh, very prudent. And I think, as I said in my application, coming at a very, uh, at a very poignant time because there has been a lot of uh, changes in ownership within the village, particularly. Um, and a lot of people, I find, um, they want to be educated. You know, what should I be doing? What shouldn't I be doing? And quite often look to their architect or their builder, and they're not necessarily inclined to uh, go along with the guidelines of preservation or what is correct. So, so anyway, I'm, in, I'm intrigued that it's uh, been started and would love to be a part of it. Great. I am not a resident of the village, resident of the town, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, would welcome the opportunity to uh, give my services and knowledge and expertise. Great, thank you. Uh, trustees, does anybody have any questions for Wade? Any questions? No? You're getting qualified. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think you're overqualified. We'll take you. Um, so uh, I would entertain a motion to appoint Wade Treadway um, to the Village Historic Preservation Commission. Is there a second? Uh, no, uh, you're entertaining it. So I make oh, a motion yes. to appoint Wade <laughs> Treadway to the Woodstock His Historic Village Historic Preservation Commission. Thank you for applying. Oh, quite I second. Motion. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. Thanks so much, Wade. Thank you. We Thank look you forward much. to what you're going to do. Absolutely. Look forward to it and uh, enjoy the idea of being at it in its infancy and helping to establish it in the correct it. manner. Great. So, Great. And awesome. I would say, but um, because of last night's meeting getting postponed, I've Looking important. That's okay. That's okay. Sorry. Thank you for making the time. Continue. We appreciate it. Continue on, but thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks. Uh, okay, so um, next, uh, next, uh, and just a, a quick reminder just because we've just gotten onto Zoom um, for anybody wanting to follow along with the agenda, um, there is a piece of paper over on the table over there that's got a QR code that you can scan and go to the agenda, um, or you can just go to the town of Woodstock.org and click on agendas, the agenda will be there. And um, for any of those of you who are as nerdy about parliamentary procedure as I am, um, we are using Rosenberg's rules. We adopted it back in June. Um, there are laminated copies over there just to follow along. Um, so it just makes it easier for everyone. Um, so next on the agenda is citizens' comments. Are there any citizens' comments? Yes. Yeah, and please come up uh, here so we can hear you and everybody on Zoom can hear you. Yeah, and let us know your name and where you, uh, and if you're village or town, please. I'm village. Okay. And I'm uh, Charlotte Hollingsworth. Great. And I was concerned uh, from last week's meeting that although, regarding Tribute Park, mm -hmm. that um, an anonymous person made a concern and when we asked what the concern was, it was not acknowledged. So we still don't know what the concern is and why was that allowed? Why is someone anonymous allowed to make a complaint and then not, we, and then not even state what the complaint is? I think that's very unfair myself. Okay, great. And that's my comment. Okay, great. Thanks and, so much. And I think we'll, we can uh, address that. Yeah, when, we'll be talking more about that topic up. later. Yeah, it's in the agenda. Yeah. All right. It's a good I'd, question. I'd appreciate it. We will Thank address you. it. Thank you. Um, are there any more comments? Can you let uh, Bill please? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yes. Hey, you come on up. And I know you, but come sit down and uh, tell us your name I and where you live. I am from Village. And I'm um, okay. And, see, please. Uh, thank you. And what I noted um, going to the minutes that haven't been approved yet, 
Um, but it was very vague about the questions that were being asked by those of us who have participated in the Black Lives Matter vigil at Tribune Park. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even mention that that was why we came to the meeting. And I, I found that odd that it wasn't in the minutes, and I wonder if you're going to redress that before you approve them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can certainly speak. We don't take the minutes, as you know. Patty. Yeah, I know that. But we can we can address that. Yeah, yeah. because it's to, a big void. Yeah. To, Given that it was uh, quite a bit of time that we spent. There's lots of things said at meetings, and yeah. uh, and so we can, and that's a conversation that, of course, we can, um, we can have you. later on. Thanks. Are there any other citizen comments? I know we've got one on Zoom, I think. Oh, yes. Come on down and tell us your name and if you're village or town, please. I'm Barbara Kennedy and I'm in the village. Great. Thanks, Barbara. And I'm just curious about any follow-up that might come from the rumored uh, movement afoot to change everyone's address. So I'm hopeful that there will be a follow-up. It will be formal and that we'll be able to offer Alternative suggestions. Okay. Um, I, I can yes. comment. Yes, please go ahead. So we looked into that um, after that meeting, and um, uh, our state representative, uh, Charlie Kimball, um, investigated for us and told us that at this time there is no state movement, nothing before the legislature whatsoever that would force us to change the addresses as they currently stand. Thank you very much. Um, and that doesn't mean uh, that there aren't folks, including our public safety officer and, and uh, fire chief, who think we should. But um, in terms of what we thought at that meeting, we, there was a correction as to whether that was imminent or not. It's not imminent or even on the agenda at this time. Okay, but it um, resurrects and, itself. Oh, know? yeah. Um, next month, uh, we, we're just going to have information um, from our fire chief and then a representative from E911. E911 are the people that do the addresses and it is purely going to be informational because now that it's been brought up, we thought maybe people could have some information, but it's it's going to be a purely informational thing at next month's agenda. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Sure, thanks so much. Are there any other public comments in the room before I go to Zoom? Okay, Wendy, Thank you. do you have a comment? Um, well, I just, um, I was curious to hear the interview that I missed. Oh. <laughs> Um, we approved him. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's the right question? How to ask that question? <laughs> thank you. I'll get my hand. Any other public comments on Zoom? No. Okay. In that case, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is additions and deletions from the posted agenda. We've got a couple of additions. One, um, we're going to add to old business an update on the town manager search process. Um, under new business, we'll be adding um, Halloween on High Street discussion. And uh, also under old business, we're going to um, do a, a briefing on the memorial and naming subcommittee that um, our good friend Philip Newberg has put together. Um, and the one other change that there is, is our uh, town manager, Tom, has, when, once we moved things, he couldn't meet at this time. so. He will be coming in late. The manager's report will get moved down, um, ideally after we're done with the permits. Um, and if he's not back by then, we'll move it again. So that means since we're skipping over the manager's report, we'll move straight to police the police chief's report. Robbie, come on up. Good evening, everyone. Good Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, so the officers uh, this month participated in the uh, Governor's Highway Safety Labor Day DUI campaign. They worked 108 extra hours of patrol over 18 days and issued 84 tickets as part of that campaign. Hey, did you say 84? 84. Is that one the town limits? Oh, uh, that's town wide, village and town. Wow. Yep. Uh, we had the active shooter training, and that went very well. And all the Woodstock officers were able to participate in that training for at least one of the days, uh, of the three days. Um, we've scheduled just this just to put this on your calendar we'll put out an announcement as well uh, an open house for the emergency services building will be held on Friday October 20 uh, excuse me uh, Saturday October 22nd at 11:45. Um, and again we'll, we'll, have, we'll advertise in the near future but just so it's on your radar 
Um, our new officer, Officer Call, is doing very well. He's been a wealth of uh, experience and, and knowledge to the police department. Sergeant Swanson's anticipated to be back September 20th. Um, officer Jacob Holmes was promoted to corporal on the 16th of August. Uh, he's been a police officer since 2013. He's been with uh, Woodstock since 2016. Uh, he holds a master's degree in criminal justice and he's certified in, as a domestic violence instructor, field training officer, and crash reconstruction. And what is he being promoted to? Corporal. Okay. Um, and myself and Officer Otrano attended the Vermont Law Enforcement Memorial at the Police Academy on the 9th of uh, September. And we received two bids for the meters, the old mechanical meters. Uh, the highest bid was for $5 per unit for a total of $1,025. So I'll, I'll be getting with that gentleman um, and uh, we'll get everything squared away. And, Get rid of those meters and collect uh, some money. <laughs> That's great. From the village. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of meters, our uh, August of 2022, so this year, $17,201.75 worth of meter, meter revenues collected. $4,562.30 were from kiosks. Uh, $7,168.95 were from the single space meters, and the Park Mobile app was $5,470.50. In comparison, last year, 2021, uh, we collected $16,894.18 in meter revenue, and in August of 2020, $784. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are the meter numbers, and that's my report. Any questions? Yes. <clears throat> During that uh, governor's uh, DUI period, you yeah. talked about you issued eight, 84 tickets. Correct. What were the nature of those 84 tickets? They were all uh, primarily speeding um, cell phone. There were a number of uh, you know other infractions sprinkled in there, but those were the the most of them. Any DUIs? There were two DUIs. Oh. Yep. There were that time frame. Good. I was worried that it was 84 DUIs. <laughs> Good, nice. That would be, price price. Yeah. That would be an issue. Wow. Um, and so the Vermont right now uh, is number four in the nation for an increase in motor vehicle fatalities and crashes. So, per in fact, per, well, nationwide, by state, if they do it by state. But per capita, I'm not sure how they come come up with that number, but it was in a press release that they issued out not too long ago. Uh, I think Maine was actually number one, Vermont was number four. So uh, the fact that we we're out there being uh, active, um, proactive in terms of traffic enforcement, has uh, I think certainly kept our crash rates lower than. Do you have comparative fi figures of for Vermont, for, for, for Vermont Woodstock for crashes versus previous years? Yep, I can get that for you. Like that'd, be, that'd be interesting sure. to know. I do have that. To see if we've had increases yep. or not. Or... I'll do that. I can look, I mean, just looking anecdotally in terms of what I see for the crash reports that I, that I approve, um, it seems this year, and I'll probably regret saying this, but I think this year we seem to be either lower or certainly not higher than last year at this time. Great. Second year now. Thank you. Right, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've got two questions for you just because uh, somebody, uh, <laughs> um, a resident on River Street asked me about the speed sign, and I think maybe Joe talked to you about this, yeah. about recalibrating it so it doesn't pick up a car twice. I will, yeah, I will redirect, I will re-aim it. Okay. So that the, the whole premise originally, my, what I thought was to show people their speed as soon as possible mm -hmm. that, so that they would okay. slow down. That's the point of the sign. Yeah. Um, but these folks were under the impression, and it could be, that because the sign picks them up further, and then there's a just the way of the angle, it, it stops, and then it picks it up again, mm -hmm. that it's skewing the data I think it's in terms parts. of you know what the actual average or speeds are. Okay. So I'll turn it so that it only picks them up as they get closer. To the sign and maybe we'll see what the data says after that okay and then a uh, related question we had talked i can't remember about fixing one of the old speeds uh speed signs and putting it somewhere on central 
Yeah, I have it. It's AC powered is the issue. So I just needed uh, somebody that would be willing to run an extension cord to the, if it's close, if they're close enough to the, where we can mount it to a pole and run an extension cord, I'm happy to put it on Central Street. It's for stock in the Clarinda. So I think we'll be able to work something out. With oh, okay. Brenda, the, the oh, always saving the day. I love it. Thanks, <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, no, I don't think there's any issues. Yes, ma'am. I, uh, I have a question. You mentioned the uh, Wendy. Oh, Wendy. Oh, hold on just a second, Wendy. Would it be possible to have um, a film or some video recording after that for those people that will not be able to attend so that we could have some idea of really what it's like? Yeah, sure. But we'll, you need we'll, to repeat we'll her question. Uh, we'll, uh, uh, okay. we'll do a video tour of it and then Thank post you. it. That's a good idea. Thank you. Um, for those of you on Zoom, um, <laughs> yeah. For those of you on Zoom, Barbara just asked uh, if there would be a recording of the uh, of the emergency system uh, building uh, for those who can't make it to the open house in October. And Robbie is on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. Wendy, did you have a question for Robbie? Yes, I do. Uh, Robbie, this could be one of those age old questions and I'm just noticing it more or um, my observation is uh, more and more trucks can't keep on their side of the yellow, double yellow line. I almost hit a official white car with red plates the other day down at Maple Fields because that was you. Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> I was so embarrassed because obviously the officer, whoever it was, stopped soon enough to give the truck lots of room because they needed two lanes. But am I seeing more or am I just suddenly noticing it? More of this happening. I don't know if you're seeing more, but when they redid the the land, the paving in the village, they restriped that. So maybe it just stands out more. There is an ordinance in the village that was adopted that allows officers to uh, stop and ticket trucks that cross over that line. Uh, so I, I'll, I will remind the officers that uh, we need a little bit more enforcement on that particular ordinance. So maybe the new paint, but I just, um, <clears throat> there's some really, long trucks that can't handle route four where i see all the time or maple fields i'm sure this is not news i was just curious if it was the thing that you were worried about and since they the uh, legislature uh did away with the over length permit requirement uh, for route, for route four um that may have something to do with you seeing more of the trucks right oh so they did repeal that which is why we passed that ordinance correct right. so uh, yeah so that'd be great if you sure. could uh We'll do that. Be vigilant yeah. um, there. Maybe Thank they'll send you. word out to their other truck buddies. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, trustees, any questions for Robbie? Mm. And are you able to stick around? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Just got some other things I would love your comment on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if it's okay with the trustees, since Tom is now back, can we go ahead and just do his manager's report? Sure. Okay. Are you prepared to do that, Tom? I am. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. So, uh, you know, everybody has a printed version of this, um, and the, most of the page is uh, dedicated to uh, the uh, schedule for the uh, annual, the new annual budget development, and uh, really we start in earnest tomorrow morning. Uh, with the finance committee, department heads, the accountant, uh, town accountant, and myself, uh, uh, going over the uh, fire and EMS, and then and you can see uh, the rest of the uh, schedule. Uh, these meetings are um, open to the public, so um, anybody can attend, as well as trustees. Um, and uh, our intent is to uh, first introduce the uh, budget to the select board on November 1, and then you can see the rest of the dates that are proposed, uh, dates in which the uh, trustees and the select board will be seeing the, uh, the budget proposal. 
Um, and then moving along to number two, tax bills were mailed out September 1. Probably everybody knows that. You've got it already. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that mainly for the public in case you haven't received the tax bill. Uh, they are out. Um, we are uh, working on hiring a new uh, public works director. Uh, I put together an interview panel that consists of the chair of the uh, trustees and the uh, select board as well as the former uh, public works director. Uh, mainly wanted him involved because uh, the three of us uh, really don't know all the details that he does and we have a really good candidate. That candidate's going to ask us lots of detailed questions and we want to be able to answer them uh, accurately. So uh, we have an interview. Actually, that date has changed. It's now uh, September 21. Um, and that will be the first of hopefully many. Uh, the trustees might be interested in knowing that uh, Casella is actually going to uh, uh, empty uh, some of the uh, high volume uh, garbage receptacles in the village on Elm Street and on the Green um, an additional time each week, and they're not going to charge us. And uh, that will, the charge will probably be new as of the new contract, and their contract ends at the end of the calendar year. So they're giving us a free <coughs> for several months. Well, Tom, what about Central Street and, and the East End Park? I mean, during the foliage season, those get overloaded also. Uh, well, I, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. So um, I can put the word out to them to, to let them know. I mean, th they were the ones informing us that, hey, you know, you've got trouble in a couple of spots and we'll take care of it and we'll charge you. So, um, yeah. I think that uh, during uh, what's coming up, yeah, there's a question over there. Yeah, I was letting Tom finish yeah. before we, yeah. Are you done? Hello. With the, with Hello, the, can you guys? The track. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a mistake. So can I talk about Josh? Yes. Uh, yeah, did you have a question for Tom? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Jill, ask your question. Um, so my name is Jill Davis, I'm a resident of the village, and I was on the select board. Um, so I've lived here for 11 years. Every single year, we put out extra trash bins during foliage. So Casella does not have this problem. So I'm not sure why this year should be any different to any others. We, need, we have plenty of extra trash bins and recycled bins, and they need to be out there. Yeah. We should. Is that what you were saying? Well, I was saying that we have a need, and we do have the trash bins that we've stored that we previously were using. So we have, do have plenty of them, as Jill said, and we should uh, uh, have the crew put them out. Uh, it should be standard by, uh, operating procedure in the highway department. By, uh, yeah, it really I should. It yeah, it is, too. Yeah. So perhaps they're planning to, but without Elijah, they, they might not. So. Yeah. No, I'll remind them. Thank you for that, Jill. Okay. Uh, Tom, what else do you have? Um, you'll probably see a, uh, advertisements for a temporary full-time office assistant, uh, which is essentially uh, replacing uh, Nikki while she is out on maternity leave. And that's uh, going to start, hopefully, in about October 10th and end uh, shortly after the first of the year. But that's what that's all about. It's not a new position, it's just replacing her temporarily. Uh, and uh, the shoes that are hanging over Central uh, Street. It's uh, modern art. It's not it's art. modern no. art. It's, uh, it's, uh, we have a, a company, a local uh, tree company that is uh, gonna remove them hopefully this week. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, trustees, do you have any questions yes. for Tom so far? Okay. I think they make this look younger. I think they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, some people think that means there's a crack house somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, your question. Yeah, my question, Tom. When, what, can you tell us what knowledge you might have about timing for paving uh, Mechanic Street where it's been torn up, the parking lot? Um, that is supposed to be done by whomever did that work. That, that was not a town or village project. 
Did so I, did, I, I don't know, but I, oh. can, I can look into it. Uh, they called today to let us know they'll be paid tomorrow. There you go. Paying tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah. You wish good to Jeffrey. Yeah. Yeah. Shoes yeah. are down, things are paid. That was done to, uh, for an installation of oh, yeah, I know. They, they, fire they, suppression. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they sprinkled that whole building. It used to be the pharmacy <laughs> building. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I didn't know when it was going to be done or who was going to do it. Okay. Um, I do have one question on the financial report. Can we wait till he goes through it? Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any other questions, uh, trustees, on the general report? Mm -hmm. No? Good, good. Okay. Financial report. Why don't you tell us and then Jeffrey gets first dibs. All right. So uh, this is about covering nine weeks. So the magic percentage on this is 17.3%. Uh, um, and, you know, that's just a target because, um, for instance, the, all, all the revenues, as you can see, are only 3.69% because we don't show any uh, tax receipts yet, but that'll change in November. And, and then we'll be way over uh, the percentage for that given time. So you have to keep that in mind about these percentages. Um, the rest of the stuff is uh, pretty much within reasonable, uh, close to this. 17 percent um as i as said that's just a target number uh, and it you know it can vary based upon one big expenditure you know like for instance you can see some of these are at 20 percent but you know there's probably a, a large expenditure that is kind of an anomaly that jumps out temporarily question last month uh, office administration was up 21 something percent yeah. Or as an eight percent period, yep. seventeen percent period. Now it's up sixty four percent. You Where, said what line are you talking about? A sixty six percent office administration. Office. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. sixty six percent instead of seventeen percent. And you said that there were probably you weren't sure, but there were probably upfront costs you were going to tell us about. Uh, no, I knew that we we had just done um, some um, front end expenditures on. Um, on some things that would, you know, cover for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, I don't have a, mm. this report does not have a, uh, an account number. So I don't know exactly what those are at, at this moment, but. Can you uh, find out and sure. just Can let you, the trustees know? Yeah, that'd yeah. Be great. That, that would be great. Because that's you. a significant amount over for this point of the year. Uh, any other questions, Jeffrey? No, that was my question. Uh, other trustees? Brenda, Gabe, <coughs> Bill? Um, I actually had a question for Robbie on this one. Um, just the police training is at about 67%. Is that stuff that's just that, yeah, front that end? That included the active shooter training. Oh, okay. So that was, you might call it a front end expenditure. What that would do is we settled all of the training for the officers for the, okay. for the remainder of the calendar year. Okay. So, I mean, we may have to wait till July to bring anything, but we go to compliance. And does your normal, um, and your other training is um, your time on the um, shooting range, is that considered training or is that a Correct. different line item? It is. It is training? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But it's not a ton of money. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have under that. Trustees, are you okay if we move on? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Tom. You're and you're obviously sticking around. I am. Yay. <laughs> uh, um, so next up is permits. And the first uh, is a use of green permit for Zach's Place Turkey Trot. And I assume that's Norm Freitas. Come on up, please. And the parade permit would be the same, cover the same thing. Yeah. So... Uh, please tell us, even though most of us know it, but uh, please tell us a little bit about the turkey trot, where it goes, and... So on Thanksgiving Day, yes, um, we have a turkey trot in the morning. Uh, la last year we uh, started from Dale Field because the, due to COVID they didn't want us to use the elementary mm -hmm. school, which we totally understood, but we're, we have permission to use the elementary school as a start, which has been our start for every year since. Well, no, the first year we had it at Mechanic Street. But uh, yeah, so nothing's changed. The route is exactly the same. Um, we hope we have as many people as we had last year and the years before. 
Um, we work with Robbie on, on traffic control for, for the whole morning, and we put cones out just prior to the race so we can direct everybody. We try to keep everybody safe. Um, that's weeks. We're hoping about 1,500 runners and walkers and bikers and not bikers, um, strollers and yeah. wheelchairs. Dogs. It's handicap accessible. Fantastic. Love it's it. one of the highlights of that happened on the street. And yeah, I'm going to count on you to take your corner. <laughs> I'll take my corner. <laughs> oh, is there going to be a band this year? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Same Next band Snyder. with a couple extras. Oh, Nick Snyder. It's a, wonderful, Snyder. Yeah. it's a wonderful event for our wonderful organization. And what are you, uh, what are you all doing on the green? Well, that's, you know, it's funny because the uh, last couple of times we've at, that had this permit, they talk about the green, but we don't actually do anything with the Okay. Green. Uh, so we don't use the green. We run around the green. But you're uh, not going to have like cheering don't. squads or anything? No, I, okay. I'm not really sure how the green gets into it. Because okay. we've always started from, you know, okay. other location from the green, just going around. Okay. Well, then we won't give you the permit for the use of the green. No, we yeah, don't we don't need the green. Well, we won't concern that then. Okay, fantastic. Good. The green's open that day, guys. Um, okay, um, trustees, do you have any questions? Norm? No, it looks like we have the certificate of liability. And everything's yeah. in place. Okay. Has the t-shirt been designed yet? Mm -hmm. What color is the shirt this year? Can oh, you tell us? She had to ask. It's color. it's a different color. It's a different color. <laughs> it's, I, I always it's I not like, like white, it's not like smack your mama green like it was last year. No, no, no okay. it's a different color. Okay. Pink. We have so many bright. sponsors. We're thinking going long sleeve, so we can have that sponsor. I would love a long sleeve shirt. I like that's long sleeves. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, my collection. Cool. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, well, if there are um, no questions, then I would entertain a motion to approve the parade permit for Zach's Place Turkey Trot. So moved. Okay. I second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you all. Thank Go you Turkey Trot. Well. Okay, um, next up on our list here is the Eastern States Cup, and Nick? Uh, I'm Matt Stout. Can yeah. two of us come up at once? Yeah, please. Okay. You can even bring two chair. chairs. And then for everybody at home and in the audience, tell us your names and uh, if you're a town or village. Uh, my name's Matt Stout. I'm a resident of the town of Woodstock. My name's Gavin Vaughn, and I am a resident of the town of Woodstock. Okay. Fantastic. So uh, this is a new thing, so I'd love to hear all about it. It, it is, and uh, we're very excited that we can host it. We had it on the calendar for June of 2020, and if you all remember June of 2020, <laughs> there was nothing. So um, we were able to bring back the event. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly give you an overview. Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Association is a nonprofit 401c3. We maintain 30 miles of trails through our partner landowners, including the town of Woodstock on Mount Peg the Woodstock Resort Corporation above the golf course and at Saskadena 6 and on the Aqueduct Company's land in West Woodstock. So we've built 30 miles of trails that are completely funded by private donations and member dues, but they are 100% open to the public. Um, without a big parks and rec budget in the, the town, we've tried to fill a void so that we have uh, uh, multi-use trails. And we just recently completed a trail up uh, to the top of Mount Peg last fall. So the Eastern State Cups is not something that is easily easily understood. So I want to give you a little idea of what it is. Um, it's, a, it's a mountain bike event that takes place at two different venues, Saskadena 6 and the Mountain Peg Trails. Mm -hmm. And the, the only reason we put in the permit application is just to err on the mm -hmm. side of caution that those riders who participate will transfer from one network to the other using the, the public roads. Um, they are not racing. They are not racing through the village. Uh, it is only a transfer from one network to the other. Um, and it is also not a mass start. So these are uh, individual riders who are, uh, a starter will release them one at a time uh, with a time interval. and the only time that they actually clock times are on the downhill segments. So five segments, two segments at Suicide Six, three segments at Mount Peg. So they climb up Saskadena Six, 
they descend SAS Kadena 6, and they have one time. Then they transfer through uh, Route 12 to the village. And I have a map, because I think that's mm -hmm. the key, yeah. Yeah. key piece. Yeah, got that. Um, and then when they come to Mount Peg, they ride up three times, down three times. The three times down are, are time segments. Then they return back to SAS Kadena 6, and they do a final lap up and down. So they have five times that are actually clocked. So that cumulative time determines uh, a winner. It's called a enduro, which is different mm. from mountain bike downhill, which is different from mountain bike cross country. It's called an enduro. Um, our high school, middle school runs classic uh, cross country races at Mount Peg, uh, but this is an enduro. And I, I, I point that out because we really didn't even know if we needed a permit since they're just riding on the roads, uh, you know, like a normal bicycle mm -hmm. citizen would do, the legal right. How, um, how many? Good question. So the, it's capped at 300, and not all racers will be doing the transfer because the younger racers um, are allowed to be driven to the, to the, to the next stage, uh, and the very youngest racers do not participate at both mountains, so they stay just at Saskatoon 6. How young is that? You would know. So you'd be 12. Under 12. Nice. Under 12? Wow. How much? categories are some of the biggest categories. Under 12? How far under 12? What's the youngest people that do yeah. this kind of thing? I've seen some young kids six. do them. Yeah, There's like six, eight. So out of the three, eight, not that so yeah. out of the 300, do we have a yeah. breakdown eight, of what we're expecting? Yeah. Eight or nine years yeah. old. Yes. So how many do you think will be making the transfer out of the 300 who would ride their bikes from Saskadena to Mount Peg? Roughly. Roughly. We don't, yeah, have, we don't have all yeah, registrations in yet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Route 12 and Route 106 that they're traveling on. Yes. Yes. So we don't know the exact number. I would say you could probably cut out 20 or 30, so yeah. maybe 270. Yeah. And so how many would you anticipate would be on the road at, at any given time? So they're... they're they're individually launched. What are the intervals? Do you know? You've raced um, and you've done it. It's just to activate their timing chips. So okay. that usually takes like two minutes. You know. So it's a two minute interval? Two, two minutes, minutes apart. They're yeah. launched one at a time. And then some people climb a little faster than others. So it naturally spreads out. OK. Um, I, I wouldn't anticipate that you would see um, like more than a few in groups at a time. Okay. Um, but we would ask them to ride single file. Okay. So we we did want to ask you your advice mm -hmm. um, on the route. We, we I might bring Robbie up. That would be Robbie. Chief. Can you join us? <laughs> so I'm going to give everyone one of these. Was um, that in the thing that you gave us? This it's, one? it's slightly different. Oh, okay. We've had um, a, an idea that was provided. Um, the top of the, sh if you hold it so that the Woodstock Inn em emblem in the top, mm -hmm. the top left, you'll have it the right way. So the change that we're thinking about is to eliminate uh, any riders on Elm Street. So if you're coming from Saskadena 6 on Route 12 and you've passed Billings Farm, we are going to introduce a right turn on River Street and then a left turn on Mountain Ave to cross the middle bridge to then go around the green and then make a right turn on 106, a left turn on uh, Cross Street, and a right turn on the Golf Ave. And then at the end of Golf Ave, you pick up the new trail, the Village Trail. And then you come back up Route 106. And then you, you finish at Mount Peg in what we call Knox Meadow down by the, the fitness center. You, you go north on 106. You stay on 106 all the way to the green. You make a right um, on back onto Central Street. Go around the green. Go back over the, the middle bridge, and then make a right on River Street and back out. <clears throat> the only left turn that you have there is is back on River Street and Elm. And we eliminate this this route eliminates the left turn from Central Street jump. onto Elm, which we right. we were worried about. Mm -hmm. Like we don't want we we wouldn't. Uh, expect to close any roads. This is very mm -hmm. few riders at a time, and we don't. We wouldn't need traffic control um, in, unless it were recommended. But I don't. I don't think it's necessary. But I think by eliminating that left, um, we just wanted to do whatever we could to uh, not impede the natural flow of traffic. 
So we're trying to have as few left turns as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, are you going back the same where, way? Where was the first left turn? Mm -hmm. well, other than yes. onto Elm Street. So it would have been here, huh? and then right, and then it would have been a left, a left onto South. Well, it's still no, going to be a left a on right. South. That's a, what? That would be a left onto South. That's a right. You have to go around. Oh, right. Sorry, right. Okay. Nice. The, the, the left turn we eliminated with this new route is if you're coming back from 106, you get to the green, you make a right, yeah, make a right. and then you would have gone all the way up to the to make uh, a M and T bank and go left. Oh, and make a left on oh, I see. So yeah, we, that's a we eliminated turn. that left at Bentley's or Coburn's. So maybe, but so you could still come down Elm Street, go, going, but coming back. We you could do the second route. That's also a, a possibility, but we confusing? were thinking about just. Um, with with traffic, we're trying to stay out of that the center it's part of the down. village. Yeah. So coming back, so it's the people on River Street. So from Peg to, so coming back from Peg to Saskadena, it, it would be the same way. It, yeah, except you can't make a, a left there. You yeah, so this, so they would go around, around and then back and then around the green. Yeah, that's tricky. Um, I mean, my my biggest concern is is this almost just because people whip around that so quickly and i wonder i mean i don't know robbie what do you think you're talking like? about the turn at river and elm yeah because people make that i mean people just don't realize that there's only one stop sign there and it's it gets a little yeah, it's just kind of a tight even for a vehicle sometimes you got to scoot out of there i'd be afraid of coming back coming back making the left yeah yeah, yeah. 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 coming, coming back, back makes me nervous. Have, uh, it would seem i mean it might be safer for the riders to utilize Elm Street. Okay, and that is the original route proposed to, yep. the, to the trustees. Mm -hmm. so it's just there's mm -hmm. more traffic on Elm and it's a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. But that intersection, I agree, is, yeah. is tricky. Uh, yeah, no, that freaks me out when I'm a good, on a good do it. Day. So would you, Robbie, think that we would need somebody at that Elm and Central? I don't think so. It's really a tough turn there. Do? And um, they, you got the crosswalk between Gillingham's and the flannel store. It's really, really. I mean, how do uh, you guys clearly ride bikes? <laughs> yeah. So, like, what is your what, so as a cyclist? Uh, what, what we notice when there's a lot of traffic um, is that a lot of cars are stopping already for the two crosswalks. The mm -hmm. one that the, the, um, the one that over. at families. Um, mm -hmm. And so that left turn is is sometimes not very difficult to make because cars have already come to a stop. You know, okay. Robbie, Robbie, 2nd of October is a really busy time in the Hogs. And the, my other concern is and just those cars. 2nd of October. 2nd of October. Second second of October. October. Yeah, yeah, yeah I told you the long day. That's high foliage. That's super. Uh, super busy. I would recommend an officer, if nothing yeah. else, just for that intersection. Like at the dummy? If there are any other issues, he could also assist you with that. Okay. Because um, I'm also concerned about those cars that are parked in front of Bentley's. Like when they back out, people just don't look, and that makes me nervous with riders. It's the nearest part of the town. The I don't know how much one officer can do, but certainly for that left turn, it, and it would be a benefit to the riders. Sure, yeah. Yeah. that would make me feel a lot better. I would appreciate it. I say this is a yeah, nervous I think that's cycling the most life. dangerous part is that left turn um, on the crossing over right there. Or, or if we kept so the room on River Street. Or the alternative is River Street. And then, you have and the then left we turn put the officer street. at that intersection. It's, You're avoiding the Central Street intersection. I think intersection. that's safer yeah. given, yeah. given the time of year. Okay. Given the time of year. So you're suggesting keep it the room as you have it on the map. Yeah. Well, there's the, two maps. There's the one that came in with the application, and this is the one that you're holding yeah, now. Yeah, I think yeah. the updated one. The yeah. updated one with, with the officer at the intersection of River Street and Elm Street. So yeah. that when yeah, bikers come out to make that left, yeah, if they slow down, they'll have an officer there with blue lights that will slow them down or, or stop the vehicle. So, yeah. and then you also have people that come back from Billings that try to cross there to go over to the mansion, yeah. and so people are just they just they don't know how to get across. So they're just like, this yeah. seems like a good idea. How how long do you anticipate the uh, the uh, event taking? Starts at nine. Yep. A.M. So the first riders would be at that intersection we just described, making a right onto River Street around 9.30. The earliest, yeah. The earliest, yeah. Okay. And when does it end? That's, that's a little trickier because there isn't like, there is, um, they're basically like, they just have to do the stages mm -hmm. on their own all there's the time. No, there's there no cut set, off on There's no cut off per se. Okay. But um, I, I think with the course, 
set, it shouldn't take more than five hours for from for the the last starter to get through, which is usually just before noon. So, okay. so, so by five o'clock, the, the the knee is not there anymore. The majority of riders will be through, you know, before three o'clock. Before three o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think three would be safe. Yeah. After and three, I think the demand would be much less. And okay. do you anticipate any um, support vehicles or anything in between the two? No. So there's not going to be. Okay. Um, just just the potential vehicles driving the, the kids. The and so it's kids. not like there's going to be like a ban taking all the kids. It'll be like their individual parents or. I think that's how it's going to be okay. structured. Yeah. It'll be and pretty spread out then by the time they get to. Yeah. On the way back. Yes. Certainly, yeah, more so on the way back. They'll be more spread out. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Where do the um, where do the riders park? Or do they All the parking is at Saskadena Six. Okay. Uh, there's there's a little camping. We're going to Pomfret Select Board next week. We're going back to Town Select Board next week. So, so much fun. <laughs> um, all the parking is there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, trustees, do you have any? Questions or Robbie, do you have another? Yeah, one? so uh, you start at Saskatoon 6, yes. the entire event. They go down to Mount Peg and, and then, then, then they come back. back to Saskatoon 6. Yeah. All right. So uh, the officer can, he can go from one point to another. So at the beginning, if you have an intersection or a location that you think he would best be utilized at as they go south, right? then let, a... let me know. Um, and we'll co I'll coordinate that with the detail officer, and then certainly, at some point when they begin to, to come back, um, or at least since once all the riders get onto 106, then he can go to the River Street intersection and just wait for them to yeah come back. So if you want to just yeah I'll give you my card. Just give me a call or shoot me an email. Tell me okay. which location you think could be best utilized, and that would and even if it's like at uh, you know Pomfret Road and, and Route 12. That might be, you know, as they come out of that intersection, he can hold up the traffic each way until everyone gets across. Whatever, whatever you think, you, you know, is going to work best for him. Thank you. you get awesome. your bang and this is a <laughs> this way. is a great event. I'm really glad that you guys are bringing this. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really this excited. Is, to see how how many states? Where? How far are people going to be from? You would know. Uh, it's it's all of northeast and Quebec. So. Maine and New York State. Yeah. Do you yeah. have pros coming? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean that Gavin couldn't win it. <laughs> awesome. So trustees, no other questions? And it looks like Wendy, do you have a question? Yes, thank you, Seaton. Um, it's probably on the permit, but for the listeners, what is the date and day of the week? Oh, yeah, this is Sunday. Sunday, October 2nd. Great, because I was thinking about I don't know if it collides with or over would overlap on a Saturday with Mount Tom Farmers Market on the in, in the parking lot there. That's why Sundays, and and I just as a citizen I I endorse the idea of the police officers' eyes on the situation. I think that would make all of the citizens feel good that it's something that's be already planned. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I like it. Is Thank your dog on comment? What's that? Does your dog have a comment? Yeah, he needs to go out, but I told him I just wanted to ask this one question. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, if everybody's questions are answered, Robbie, you're good? Okay, fantastic. Um, then I would entertain a motion to approve the permit for the Eastern States Cup. So moved with the... Uh, the roads is chosen as, as discussed tonight. Okay, and the addition of the police officer. And the, yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Aye. Uh -huh. Fantastic, thanks thank so you. much guys, That's I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's see, oh, thank next you. on our agenda is the fundraiser for World Heart Day um, from Woodstock Terrace. Um, I, I think you forwarded me the email, the person who was uh, Meg Johnson was supposed to be here. She cannot, unfortunately, they couldn't send anybody. And I think there were going to be changes anyway. Um, so we will, can you get in touch with her and just say, because there were going to be changes, we didn't know what we were deciding on. Mm -hmm. um, and so if she wants to bring it for next month, certainly we'll consider it. 
Yeah, they would have to reschedule. They'd have to reschedule the date because it's September 29th. Yeah, yeah. and they had um, Tom had talked to them, and they wanted to do like a coin drop, like where you like solicit they, people people in traffic. Oh God. Um, and then she, I think maybe she was had changed her mind on that, and they wanted to do something different. So yeah. we'll wait until they decide what they want to do, and we'll uh, take a look at that. Um, so when they come back, we'll talk about that. Um, the next is a food on the green permit from the Woodstock High School varsity hockey. Is there anyone here to talk about that or on Zoom? Haven't we had this yeah, before? Uh, they Oh, okay. Um, can you? Oh, you know what? I called her yesterday. Yeah, I've spoken to her also. Okay. Um, I mean, we've we've talked to them. We've had a pretty good um, conversation with them. I feel pretty confident about it. So, trustees, <laughs> if we can get them, uh, Nikki, do you have you have a? Can you give her a call? I know that uh, Nicole's phone number is on that application. Is, are you able to do that? Okay. Or yeah, do you want to do it? I know she is not in town. She was going to have a someone else jump on. Okay. Yeah. Um. So while we're waiting, and if we don't hear from her, um. So this is for the we we. Can you take it in the conference room? Sure. Thanks. And we'll see if we can get them. Um, so, trustees, this was for the, we uh, we allowed for three people to be on the green to sell food on Sundays and Mondays, <laughs> nonprofits. Um, we have trees and seeds is currently there on Sundays and Mondays, so we've got two other slots that are available. This is the boys varsity um, hockey team from Woodstock Union High School. Um, they wanted to do a fundraiser. They wanted to take the remain, they wanted to take all the Sundays and Mondays that are available um, from now until the end of the foliage season. Um, that would mean that we're up to two vendors. Their money would go exclusively to their needs. I believe they have something, they've got thousands of dollars worth of ice that they have to pay for. Um, and they, according to their application, um, are gonna do things like uh, hot dogs, beverages, baked goods, those sorts of things. Um, on on Sundays and Mondays, um, is so um, I've asked them to communicate with the folks at Trees and Seeds okay. so that they're offering slightly different foods. Oh, nice! Um, and they said that they would. Um, they may not be there every Sunday and Monday. No, nor is Trees and Seeds. They're allowed to. Um, the thing that. Uh, is still up in the air is they're going to request their certificate of insurance from the high school. But also they are part of the town uh, and perhaps, uh, and they're volunteers, so it's possible that they could be um, covered under our insurance. Yes. So one way or another we can get be covered. So yes, I believe Tom had the conversation with them that they were comfortable being covered under our insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did. Yes. Well, they had to fill out a form. They had to yes. fill out a form. Yes. And once yep. they do that, for so we, so we need to make sure that anything would be pending that. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there? Let me see. Are there any? Um, are there any public comments on that? I have a question. Oh yeah, I just wanted to okay. make sure we got it going through our rules. Uh, if there's not. I would, I, I okay. Would, I would make a motion. Okay. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve this uh, pending uh, the certificate of insurance. Can we have some more discussion? I just oh, want yeah. to clarify the point of how many vendors we approved. Three. 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 And they would be have Sundays, one and, Sundays yeah. and Mondays only, and Trees and Seeds is the only one that went through because mm -hmm. there was opposition in the town about lunches and stuff. And We've only that. had, this will be our second application right. that's so been So we're within, within what we said we did. Yes, sir. Yeah, Thank you. Definitely. Okay, I have a question yes. as well. Yes, um, So are we being guaranteed that these two organizations are going to be there every Sunday and every Monday? No. No, they can be there every Sunday and Monday. Oh, they, okay, so 
they can be, be, but they may not be. That right. is correct. That has been our experience. They're volunteers. And I've said, I've, I've let them know that uh, Monday's the most critical day in terms of food service, lack of food service during foliage period in Woodstock. Um, and that's the hardest day for them to find volunteers because it's a school day. Um, but I, I certainly emphasize that to them, and we hope that at least one of them will be there every Monday. But so if they can't guarantee, could we possibly look for other options? I mean, we approve for nonprofits, so other nonprofit options, yes. I mean, we would certainly want it, but we have one more spot left that we approved. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't know. Uh, as it has to be a nonprofit. That's what we voted on, I believe. I don't recall that, but uh, anyway, um, we have such a critical need on Mondays. Yes, we do. Um, I would like to see us. I would entertain more applications. <laughs> yeah, regardless of whether they're nonprofit. I don't care. These people are coming to Woodstock and yeah. they can't feed I, them. Yeah, I think. I mean, I feel like. We should have something more permanent and definite that, and if we can't, you know, if somebody can't do a Sunday, then maybe we should really try hard to find somebody else to fill that spot. <clears throat> well, let's, um, that's, I think, discussion for another time. Let's, I'd like to just finish this motion, but okay. we'll talk about it at a future date. Um, there is no future date, though, Madam Chair. Oh, that's true. But This right. is foliage right upon right. us yeah. before our next meeting. Well, this is where we are now, so. Um, unless there's somebody with an application right now, which would be great. Yeah, well, I know, unless you have an idea. I do not. No, no, I'm talking at Brenda. Um, I think that there's options that we could explore. Well, why don't you explore them? We could always have a special meeting to entertain. That's correct. At, um, just this one item. Okay. Just, just to, the, the, the permit's out there, and we can always alter it to allow it for okay. a business. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions or discussion? Any, uh, so I, I so made the motion. Is there a second to approve this application pending that they sign for the insurance that will cover them under the town? So. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Did you say aye or did you not? Oh, any yeah. opposed? No? Okay. Did you say aye? No. Are you, are you abstaining? Um, any abstentions? Uh, I would say yes, I'm going to abstain. Okay, so that would be four eyes and one abstention, okay? Thank you. I'm going to have to learn how to spell abstention. Okay. Um, it doesn't sound like we've been able to get them. Uh, so... Next on the agenda is now we're moving to old business. First item on the agenda is uh, public, tr public trust funds disbursement. Jill, can you come up and talk to us, please? And I think she's got something in, got something in the packet. Okay, so you, um, I'm Jill Davis. I'm the public trust, the appointed public trustee of funds. You appoint me, and we agree to make decisions together. So you should all have a piece of paper that looks like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once a year, I want to come to you, or whoever does this job should come to you, and we should agree how much we're going to disperse from each fund. We have 155,000 in total in four different funds. Some of the funds have rules about how they are dispersed. Like, you can only use the net income. Some of them have no rules, and it's at our discretion. So I will go through the four funds, and I'd like to make four decisions tonight. So the first fund is the Frank S. McKenzie Fund. There's $3,755 in here, and this is uh, to pay for the town fireworks only. Um, these funds uh, can be spent at our discretion. We could spend them all in one go, or we could give 300 a year, which is 8% of the fund. Funds are invested in the stock market. An average return is 8%. Maybe if we only give them 300, we can keep that going for quite some time. 
So I'd like to propose $300 to go to the firework fund to contribute to that cost. Phil, how'd you come up with 8%? Is that what you expect to gain in the market so it stays relatively even? Or? That's a norm for um, people spending from funds like this. Mm -hmm. uh, varies from 5 to 10%. Um, it goes with the stock market returns. So if you take the long view, 8% seems to be a number that pe many people use. So would you like us to uh, discuss these individually? I think so. Okay. Yes. I, I love I okay. love your I love your suggestion. For Go this motion one. to motion. Okay. Are there any other um, technical mm -hmm. questions on this? Or is there any public comment on this? Okay. Um, in that case, I would entertain a motion. So <laughs> is there uh, for, uh, for, for as as, yeah. as suggested by the trustee, trustee of public comment? Yeah. Second. Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, passed. Okay, the next one is the Orly Whitcomb Fund. There is $70,980 in this fund. This one has a restriction that we can only spend net income. The fund was set up in back in 1936 with a gift of 26,000. So you could argue that everything over 26,000 is income and depreciation and then spend that. But this might be a fund that we want to keep for a long term and direct it to pay for East End park expenses and village tree work. So there's always some money going into those expenses. If we spend 8% of this one, that would be 5,600 this year, which would pay for the expenses for the East End park and contribute then to your tree fund. Can we come up with the East End park expenses? The amount for that? Uh, right now, it's just fertilization that's been agreed to, right? Uh, for, for no. Uh, fertilization, no. Uh, tree, tree, tree work, no. Not weed whacking. Mowing? No. 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 Mowing. 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 Tree work and road, fertilization. Road maintenance. So, what's your um, estimate road. of expenses? Um, well, somewhere around 10000 It's in the budget. It's in, the, it's in the town budget. And what's your estimate of income? That. <laughs> far less we than had. We had $2,550 so far at this fiscal year in income. So maybe we need 7500 to make up the difference? Mm -hmm. How much were you expecting that was going to go for the tree fund? for the tree. Not my decision, I don't, I don't care. Okay. But what I'm thinking is, that if, if the East End Park is costing us 7500 I suggested that the Orly Wink Whitcomb Fund and the Old Fire Station Fund go to pay for tree work. Maybe all of that money should go to pay for East End Park work, and then the East End Park doesn't cost the village taxpayers anything. Well, the thing is, um, the, this is being, the town is sharing this expense. This isn't coming out of the village budget. What is? Part of it's coming out of the village budget. Is Any tree work is coming out of the village budget. Okay. And the fertilization, I think. The mowing and, mm -hmm. and certainly maintaining the road that goes down is coming out of town budget. Um, <coughs> so um, so we need to I prepare. would suggest we keep this number where you have it so to, for this to be a longer lived use of the fund. Uh, I wasn't. In, I wasn't suggesting increasing it. I was oh, suggesting. I like uh, she was suggesting merging. Or adding the other. Merging. Or the, oh, oh, right. merging it. So I'm asking, what, what are the East End Park expenses that the village has to pay for that are coming out over and above? Well, we don't know what the tree work is because we're waiting for a report from the tree warden. So we don't know what that expense is going to be. Uh, we anticipate that's going to be higher in years to come than it is right now, as they're fairly young trees. Um, so uh, I think this is more than sufficient, personally, um, as an amount to take out. And if we don't spend it all, but um, you know, we can contribute. Well, our budget says thirty-four hundred for East End. Yeah. So it's it's smaller than this amount. Yeah. Um, well, what, what about that fertilization bill you'd be talking to me about? That's included in the 3400. How much was it? Mm -hmm. I, mean, uh, I think it was 450. 
in addition to the 3,400? Yeah, but, but it's twice a year. Just once. No, I've heard that was like three and four times a year. Yeah, we haven't had a report yet from the man, Peter Butler, who has been maintaining that. And he's meant, we're meant to have him come and report to us. What's the total again, Joe? Um, I'm suggesting that 5,600 comes out of the Audi Whitcomb Fund. Okay. And that okay. fund was set up to. Okay. And the fire station. Okay, so I, I, I'd like to consider. You can go to civic betterment, so. I'd like to consider an amendment to that. Um, and perhaps, Tom, if you have a suggestion of where we could find it otherwise. We have, we have small uh, expenses that come up from time to time that we don't anticipate, mm -hmm. like sneakers hung across Central <laughs> Street on a wire, and suddenly, next this week, it's a $50 expense. Small. But where do we, where do we take it from? I'm wondering if we could say something that uh, expenses uh, under $200 for civic betterment that we're unaware of could also come from this fund, the balance for exactly what you've said. I'm not very happy with that as a public trustee of funds. No. I, don't th I think there's too much. I, I would like to get to the end of the year and say, this fund paid for yeah. this. Yeah. I think that if I left money to the village, I would want to know what the money is being used for. So, it's Tom, we're, the administration of that will cost more than. The yeah. Okay, so where where are you taking the fifty dollars from? I have no idea at this point. What is that wire that the shoes are on? It's a banner hanger. It's a cable. All right, so it's not electrical or anything no. like that. No. 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 I, I think we should close the street down for two hours and tell everybody fifty bucks, and you can have a pop on getting those shoes. <laughs> that would be fun. What size are they? Are right? Seriously, why not? You can't um, use those for pickleball. Okay, so you know well, there are other things that come up like that, and the answer is you don't know where the money's coming from. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, I don't know why we right, couldn't take small. I, yeah, small but I feel like I, I disagree, and I'm I'm representing the people that left money to the village. I think it should be earmarked something. for something very specific. Civic betterment. That's not specific. Well. I I, I mean I if we it. want to we I mean. Would you be opposed to putting both of those funds towards tree work? I mean, we know that we have all these EAV things that we need to inoculate, and mm -hmm. we don't have the money to no, do it. I think that would be great. I just asked, Tom has been writing to me for about six weeks about fertilization bills. Oh. Well, East End Park has Does to the be, town pay it's fertilization not just tree work, work but, fertilization? East, but fertilization, because that includes the lawn. Uh, it's just uh, the word you to say, East End Park expenses. Go ahead. You're done. I'm okay. done with that. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we kind of footed the bill with the understanding we, we would get reimbursed. So the town paid it. The, the town paid it, but the village did not pay it. Right. Okay. The village well, should pay it. That's a village expense. Right. Right. Yeah. Is it not? The town has agreed to pay for some of the expenses okay. at the East End Park, which is enjoyed by all of the okay. citizens of Woodstock, Sorry, yes. get as well as those who visit here. Okay. Mm -hmm. But ground stuff is normally paid for by the town. So we've agreed to some specific things only. So okay. far, so far. And um, this, I have no problem with this wording. I just wanted to add some other expenses, but if you don't want to, fine. Isn't the Eastern Park um, portion that we're contributing um, only set for a year and it's going to be revisited each year? Yes. I recall. All right, so yes, this is really agreement is only for time. this year. Is this so money is a fiscal year, Jill, from July 1st to June 30th? That's when this would be spent? Yes. Okay, thank you. Starting now. Yeah, because we're in fiscal year 23. This and this fiscal year, right? So what would you like to use this money? Well, would you like to, first of all, would you like to have this amount dispersed? And what would you like to use it for? I'm not comfortable putting it to East End if we don't know how much East End is going to. Well, well, we have an estimate. Including East End. We do have yeah. an estimate. Yeah, it's in the... It's a, in the and where are we going to get the money otherwise? And it's all... Okay, so we know how much East End costs us? Is it more than fifty-six hundred dollars? Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, that's not 10. what it's going yeah. to cost. So the it's village. about ten. That's not okay. all what the village pays for, though. Okay. Why well, we want to know how much the village has to pay? We've got thirty-four hundred dollars in our budget for it. Okay. Okay. We also spend a thousand. We spend a thousand dollars for parking at, at Sunset Farms mm -hmm. for the summer program. So we, the number is entangled <laughs> reimbursements. That's correct. Oh my God! Yes. This is such a mess. But not all. I, I'm, 
Why don't we use the wording of East End Park Expenses and Village Tree Work? Yes. And then, so why don't you present a budget of what you're going to spend as a village on the East End Park for this year? Take that away and leave the remainder for tree work. That works for me. I'm fine with that. Brilliant. I'm fine with that. Okay, good. You leave, mean the original both, idea? Leave, this, leave yeah. both those, wording, those wordings <laughs> But in. with a little bit of accounting that might help. Yes, yes, because I would like to know what's going to what so that we know for next year. Are there any other questions for Jill about the Orly Whitcomb Fund? Yes, Wendy? Wendy has one. Thank you. Thank you, Seton. Um, thank, uh, thank you, Jill. I, I have a question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> This is a little broader comment than just East End Park, but uh, if we're going to be kept just to this part, just I want to make sure that we're staying on track. I'm staying on track about disbursements from a public fund. Um, I, in the big picture, I feel that each time you make a small decision of how to fund something from some pocket of money, we never get to the bottom of what we're spending on a particular, uh, this is more of a counting comment, but on a particular park. Um, so the, the same old question keeps coming back, Seton, how much do we spend? Yeah. And because it, it comes from so many different places. So. I'm going to put in a reservation comment that not funneling some money to East End Park because we don't know where else it's coming from right now is, I wouldn't be in favor of that. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Yep. yep. I appreciate it. Uh, there are any other public comment? Okay. In that case, uh, let's, uh, I would entertain a motion to, um, to uh, take a $5,600 disbursement from the Orly Whitcomb Fund to pay for East End Park expenses and whatever's left over after that goes to Village Tree Work um, and that there be an accounting of exactly how much is spent on East End Park expenses and for what. Is there a second? Second, I make the motion. You make the motion. As stated by you. Yes, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Did you say I Bill? I'm still, I'm still waffling about the trees seem more important than okay. Well, we're Park we're going to fund anyway, so okay, the trees well, will I... come up in the next one. So I'll say I. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, eyes have it. It's been passed. Next, Jill, talk to okay. us about the old fire station. So right? those two are checks that I can write to the village immediately without any additional um, authority. The old fire station fund has twenty four thousand in it. And anything we decide from here has to be warned and voted on at the next village meeting. Okay. So an 8% disbursement from here would be $2,000. And I suggest that that goes to pay for village tree work. Okay. Trustees, are there any questions for Jill about that? No. Okay. Are there any public comments? Okay, if seeing it's none, I would entertain a motion to approve a $2,000 disbursement from the old fire station fund to pay for village tree work. I, you can't do that. You have no, to, oh, no, oh I, to sorry, let me, you have to make a recommendation that you approve it to be warned. Yes, I approve it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I would entertain a motion for a $2,000 disbursement to pay for village tree work from the old fire station fund to be warned, to be warned at the next meeting for a vote by the public. Okay. 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 Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Question: The next meeting, the next trustees meeting, or the next annual meeting? Trustees, trustees meeting. Trustees, 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 trustees meeting. Regular village trustee meeting. It just needs yeah. to be war warned to the public. Okay. The next one: Ethelwood Sidewalk Fund. This was established in 1935 with a gift of forty thousand dollars for the care and upkeep of the sidewalks in the said village. Not very much money has been spent from this fund. Um, it ju is just kind of, it's worth 50,974. Um, I suggest that it is all taken out, the fund is closed, and all the money is put into sidewalk repair. The alternative is to leave it in the stock market where it might go up, it might go down, every year an audit fee will be taken out of it um, and 
What's the point of money in the bank when we have sidewalks to walk on today in bad repair? If we take it out now, it's the audit fee. We don't suffer an audit fee. Well, the the village public trust funds are audited. Yes. And um, how that money is divided is up to the town manager. So um, we would need to get audited this year, probably pay our fee. But then next year, we could argue that our our numbers are so small compared to the rest of the town and the village, maybe our audit fee should go down. And how much is that audit fee? It's about $400 a year. Okay. And my objective for this is to make the procedure so simple that there is very little audit work and our fee should be reduced. Okay. How much sidewalk work has been done, Tom? Because I know my street's been done. It looks much better. Is there a lot more to do? Elf, there's there's so, so much more. Elf Street, okay. has, Elf Street has been done, but not completed. Right. River Street needs to be done. Chestnut right. Street needs South, to be done. Uh, needs way more than 50. And I will interject and just let Tom talk about what we're going to get on Friday. Oh, yes, we're going to have the, uh, well, they're promising it for Friday. Friday ish. That's like the third promise. I know, but, I know. But hopefully we get the, uh, the sidewalk stuff from mm -hmm. uh, Two Rivers. Which will say that which will which has which it grades has priority, all priority. yeah it's got all the priorities so it, it grades each section of sidewalk so that you know which like is the worst that needs to be done first so it gives us the ability to prioritize and say this is the worst that needs to be done or that sort of thing so and does it come up with a cost per square <clears throat> yard I think it does I you know I wasn't I didn't commission it but I'm sure it does and that's going to be an estimate. You know, you, you don't so, know what it really is until you go out to bid these things. 50000 is a, is a job in the box. Yeah. 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 So and right should, now, I suggest that the village needs as much money as possible. We should take yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm totally yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Should take I, it I, and, I mean, we don't we don't know what the total cost is. And yeah. We'll need to prioritize. And, um, I mean, costs are not getting any cheaper. <laughs> and never going to get you. Really. No. It's just no. important. So we have to, we have to we take it to, that it be segregated for use for this purpose right. only. Yeah. We need yes. to take it. I mean, yeah. the, the paving that was done this summer on sidewalks, which we just discussed where it was, I think that cost 90000 So yeah. gives you an idea. It There's might finish Elm Street if we're lucky. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, or do yeah. someplace that's Jesus. worse. Oh, with 50? No. Yeah, probably not. There's some places, <laughs> that, are, some places that are worse. This than much. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Ethel yeah, Woods can say, I did that. Yes. Yeah, we'll just put it it's such a shame because if she'd done in if we'd done this in nineteen thirty five, we might have done quite a lot. There you go. <laughs> and nothing would be damaged between now and then. Um, are there any other uh, questions or comments for Jill from the trustees? On that particular On point? this particular uh, on the Ethel Woods sidewalk fund. No, no. Are there any public comments? Okay, uh, seeing as how there are none, and this is something that we don't need to have a public vote on, is that correct? Okay, no, it's at our discretion. Okay, um, then I would entertain a motion to clear out the Ethel Woods sidewalk fund and use the full balance to improve sidewalks uh, within the village. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it carries. Uh, well, I have a question, Joe. On your uh, sheet that you gave us for the annual procedures, there's one line in there in July. It says, write disbursement checks to the village for public trustee fees. Did that mean to say stop funds? Sorry, say that again. Did you mean to write disbursement checks to the village for public trustee fees, comma, and auditor's fees? Yes. Did you mean to say public trustee funds? Or as what? well as those two things. What are the public trustee fees? So um, in the budget, uh, it is, I'm allowed to uh, have be paid $400. That money comes out of the public trust funds. So I write a check to the village, the village writes a check to me. I don't take that money, so it's... What do you mean you don't take it? I don't Directly. ask for any money. I know. Waive my fee. Right, so there, uh, that's what I thought. You've done that in the past, yes. which is very generous of you. Um, but um, so, so you, you just get to return it. You, you take it out and then you leave it. No, I don't do anything. I, I tell Zoe not to pay me, so I don't write that check. Okay, that's what my question was. So it could be done, it just isn't. 
Okay. Right. I you. think you probably need to leave it in there as a procedure in case there's somebody who needs to have the money yeah. who's doing the job. Someone in the future. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else for us, Jill? Yes. So, who oh. shall I write the check to? Um, you can write it to the highway. <laughs> <laughs> so, since it's going to go to the highway, shall I write it to the village so the village pays highway? Yeah, so you keep to control the village of it? Yeah, and then we'll, we'll right. deal with it from there. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, he's, technically, that has to go to the village initially. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It would be correct for the yeah. fund. Okay. Thanks, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jill. Okay. Thank you, Jill. And next up on the list is Village Park Permits. Where did you go with the, which one? You yeah, we're going to that. Town manager permit. Yes. Yep. Yeah, the next one is the, we already did Village Park Permits, correct? No. No. No, no we're about to do Village <laughs> Park Permits. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's next. It's Sorry. Page 29. That's right. Okay. Sorry. I can't follow my own stuff. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, so the, yes. So the next subject that we're going to talk about is village permit, uh, con uh, permit continuity. And I'm going to let Jeffrey, uh, talk about that item. Yeah. I'd like to say a few comments. First of all, in terms of one, one question that was raised tonight, we did receive uh, an anonymous question <coughs> regarding you, permits on Trevo Park because this person knew there were permits on the Village Green, East End Park, and so forth. And it was simply broad. It was not about any particular group that's currently using that park, um, such as uh, you folks on Mondays. Can you say your names? Your names? Black Lives Matter Vigil Group. Fun. Black Lives Matter Vigil right. Group. Right. Was never mentioned as a concern. Okay, the concern was, are permits needed? And there were other groups using this besides the Black Lives Matter vigil group. Yes, not on Mondays. Excuse me. Um, we'll, we'll, hey, uh, Peggy, I'm sorry. We'll, we have public comment. Um, and when it's time for public comment, we would love to hear from everybody. So, um, so it was used by uh, some other groups as well um, that I observed and numerous other people observed. However, um, the point was, the only thing that was very broad in general, our permits needed. And so we decided, I uh, brought it to our, it was brought to our, our chair, and it was like, let's have a general discussion about it, because we have permitting for our other parks to protect both the land owned by the village and the people, and to be organized. Um, in no way, at any point, was it discussed among any of us to infringe on anybody's First Amendment rights. It was never discussed or brought up. And at our last meeting, I think that was mentioned as well. Um, and um, it was certainly never also discussed about the Black Lives Matter vigil, which occurs every Monday, uh, which I, I support. So many people in Woodstock support. Um, and wasn't a part of the, our discussion at all, nor is, is it something that the trustees are concerned with. Personally, as one trustee, I'm concerned with the placement of objects, or in other words, infrastructure, on the, on the land, such as tables, physical displays placed on the property. And uh, you know, uh, other trustees may be concerned with other things, but that's something I, I think we might look into, into. But we're in a general state of discussion at this point, and I just wanted to make it very clear um, because there's been some misunderstanding and uh, by those who've come to our meetings and by those who've gone on the listserv and haven't come to our meetings and have made some assumptions. And I want to make it clear that at no point are we interested in infringing on anyone's First Amendment rights, whether it be the Black Lives Vigil on Mondays or any other group. But, but if people want to organize and put physical objects on that land, I'm concerned that we don't have a permitting process my concern. That's my comment. Okay. Sure Thank you. Um, so as Jeffrey mentioned, we're not voting on anything tonight, um, but since it's been a month since we started this discussion, and it is an ongoing discussion, as Jeffrey pointed out, I would love to hear uh, from the other trustees about what they think about consistent park permitting. We've talked about Sherbu. We've also talked about Teagle's Landing as another park where the two parks that we don't have any permitting. 
Um, and I know that everybody's had the chance to talk to other residents. Um, and just, I wanted to get everybody's input about what you think now that we're a month into this conversation. Brenda? Okay, um, I'll start. Um, I do think that it's important for our village to have the same rules and regulations for each and every park and, and whatnot. I think consistency is something that we really should um, have better control of. Um, also, some people have mentioned to me since this whole thing has become a topic on uh, the listserv um, that people are very concerned about the distraction of drivers while they're at a really busy intersection where people are trying to cross the street and people are coming out of Pleasant Street. You've got people trying to cross the crosswalk and you've got traffic going both directions that it's a complete distraction to drivers mm -hmm. and they're really concerned about that. I'm not saying this is my concern. I'm saying this is what has been brought to my attention by several people. Um, I've seen some confusion out there myself when people hear car horns beeping. If they're on Pleasant Street, they're thinking that cars are behind them. And those people are beeping their horn, meaning that they need to go. Mm -hmm. And there's been, some, there's been some kind of frightening situations that must occur out there. Um, it's just, it, it is a distraction. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, that's what's been brought to my attention okay. by numerous people. Okay. Great, thank you, Brenda. Gabe, do you have any thoughts you'd like so, to share? So for me, the feedback I've gotten is that um, people feel that it's very, it should be consistent. Okay. Um, it, makes, it makes complete sense uh, to, ha to have it be consistent. Um, I think, um, it was raised in part of the discussion last time, and, and I forget exactly who raised it, but that it, it uh, you know, we, we can certainly, as, as trustees, you know, issue a permit for a year or for two years for people to potentially be able to, to uh, gather and, uh, and voice their opinion on a particular subject. Um, I think we, that was mentioned last time. And that that's perfectly that that sounds perfectly right to me, and uh, to others I've spoken to. Okay, thanks, Bill. What are your thoughts on the topic? Well, mine are a little mixed feelings about it. Um, I can appreciate the need for consistency amongst the parks, but uh, some of you remember last year I did a fairly extensive research about the seven parks that are in the village, and you probably know they are Vailfield, Great the Green, East End Park, Billings Park, Mount Peg Park, and Teagles and Tribu all our parks within the town. And what I found is each park has a different need and different requirement. Uh, they're funded differently, they're managed differently, some have active groups, some are managed by committees like Billings Park, and they're all different places and have different, um, different qualities. So I can see um, East End Park is a big place, and I looked at the policies again, which uh, Thomas and I just have to put in the package. And you know, if there's more than 15 people, we should have a permit, and it's more than 100, it costs this, and there are all kinds of rules about the policy there. There's policies for the green, which we know, uh, even today, very active with the Wednesday market. There's a whole um, need for, for a permit there. Is there a need for permits for these littler parks, uh, Tribu and, and Teagles? They're really small parks. And um, historically, I think Tribu Park has been, um, you know, see, emotionally, sort of tradition. I've only lived here for like three years, but people tell me this is a place where people are allowed to make a demonstration and allowed to speak and have a have a, a presence in the town. And I think that's probably a good idea. So, do we need to have every park require a permit just for the sake of being consistent? I think we're a pretty small town. I don't know that, that that's absolutely necessary. Maybe it is. Maybe we should be talking about permits for everything and every little thing. I can't imagine needing a permit for Teagle's Landing. Can you? <laughs> Who's going to gather down there? So I'm going to ask questions to Robbie since he's here. Um, what's the biggest crowd you've ever seen on Tribute Park? You, you've been here a long time. Five people? Ten people? Do you, do you recall just off the top of your head? Oh, I think it was probably these ladies here and their group. Yeah. Okay. Pay Jane Curtis had, was, yeah. was it Jane? Yeah, Jane came. Jane. Yeah, I think that was probably one of the, and it was right at the beginning of the Black Lives Matter. So like ten people or something, yeah. right? No, I think it was more. Than no, that, but no. Right. okay. Not they were uh, after the George Floyd murder. Right. There were, I believe, about thirty people. Okay. 
who did right. who did come. So I guess the question um, is, is but there... basically we have five people. Yeah. So the question is, is, is five and people threatened? Right? Yeah. There's no place to put. Yeah, I get that. We're just, yeah, we're going to say, let me just finish my, my report, and then yeah. I'm sure Stephen will give you a chance to talk more. So the point I'm making is, is there, is there a crowd so big there on a regular basis that we need to have, have it be permitted? And my comment is that, you know, the, <laughs> there's sort of been a tradition within the town to be able to use that park for this reason. It's dangerous. I, I, I respect what, what, um, what Brenda's saying about people honking and being confused about the, the horns and stuff going by. And I think those are, are good comments to have and good comments to pay attention to. In terms of the size of the crowd, uh, you know, East End Park, 15 people or more, you need a permit. Uh, do we need to have that at, at uh, Tribute? I, I don't really think so myself. I think that it's fine the way it is, and they broke down and fix it. Although these other concerns should be addressed too. So I'm sort of on the fence about what to say, oh, I'll vote for it, I'll vote for it. Um, I, I think it's an important discussion. Uh, it's a very important place for, for political expression. I think that's important to have a place in town to have that, and that's what we have there, right? So um, the question is about gathering the size. Um, there's, is, is it okay to have different parks with different needs? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess there is. I mean, it seems like all the parks have different needs in terms of their financing and who's running them and managing them. That's why we need a parks manager. That's why my big thing is everybody knows that. We need to find funding to have a position like that. But um, do we need to have that be totally the same across the board? I, I don't know that we do. Okay. I need to add to mine. Uh, okay, would you like to add before or after me? I would love to hear from you so that I can. Oh, fine. I know, I'd love to include because maybe you'll change my mind. Well, what I, I'd like to say that um, I, I, I've been watching Tribune Park for 50 years, and um, I've never seen uh, too large a crowd there. Um, I don't think we should require a permit for, for peaceful gatherings to uh, express opinions at all for a year or any, any, any time period there. Um, I, as I said before, I think we should have a permit if people want to put something physically on the on the land mm -hmm. like tables and displays um, and I think that's important I, I would even include uh, Teagle's Landing uh, uh, for that purpose um, I, I don't want to see that happen without a, a permit I'm not saying we wouldn't as a group yeah. um, uh, say yes to someone who applied to do something there mm -hmm. but uh, that it should be required so not for an example of what the Black Lives Vigil is doing or any other group doing something similar to express their opinions. That should just be left alone. I agree with Bill on that. And uh, that's that's my opinion. Is it, it seems to me is that a policy? We, we do have different rules for different parks. And we can't be consistent, com completely consistent. Because the East End Park has very different regulations than the Village Green. Right. And, and they're good rules that can't be made identical. Um, and so this can't be identical. Either the parks manager would be able to evaluate that too. Isn't there a way to put a policy in this, Tom? Like, there's uh, a policy for freeze the park. I'm sorry, is it my turn? No, not my turn. Seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> seat. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I, the concept of having a policy like this in the park. You know, should this happen, then we need to have this, the if then kind of statement. We need a permit if there's going to be a bunch of tables and a big, 50 or more people out there or something like that. We have a policy for Houston Park and a policy for the green, right? So maybe we need a policy for the smaller parks that makes it simple and everybody can work with it. I don't know. Just the button. Sorry. Oh, I'm not a turn. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. No, I want to be sure everybody got uh, got their turn first. Okay. Um, so uh, I appreciate all the input that I've been getting from the past month. It has been, uh, it has it has been vigorous conversation, um, and in and in talking and now paying more attention to the parks, um, I my biggest concern and taking in actually a lot of what people have said today. Um, is is the safety issue um, and that sort of falls on the side a lot of what Jeffrey was talking about because I was thinking about we had had a conversation about like maybe we just do a permit if there's physical infrastructure but when I sit at that sign at Pleasant and I'm going to merge on and I'm looking at Central if there were any physical infrastructure I might not be able to see down there um, see fully around and you know those cars come up quickly um, and then of course we have two crosswalks and so I wouldn't want any sort of distraction so if there was a tent and people looked at the tent instead of looking at the crosswalk that would be a concern and that's a very busy area dogs children all that sort of stuff 
So my my thought, my recommendation, um, and in talking with um, with a couple of other people and doing a little bit more research is creating an ordinance um, that does not create permits, but says that there is no physical infrastructure, temporary physical infrastructure allowed in that space, um, so that we people can still come. But what we're saying is an ordinance that says uh, that there cannot be any physical, temporary physical infrastructure in that space because it would be distracting to traffic. It would have to be more than just temporary physical infrastructure because yeah. what would stop somebody from putting deciding to live in the park and put a tent down. Well, that's we already have a rule that you can't camp. You can't camp on the park. Well, no, that's in Not the village. So, so the ordinance could talk about both Tribu and Teagle and cover the things that are covered okay. under East End okay. and the Green. There's no camping. Okay. <laughs> there is no temporary or permanent physical structures that are put up, um, and certainly, phys you know, permanent would have to go through the village anyway. Um, but nothing that would impede seeing from one side to the other. Um, in talking to uh, to uh, my fellow chair of the select board, um, he his opinion or his concern to me was just making sure, like what Brenda said, that there's less of a distraction. So making sure that if there's something in the park, we just let people know that there are, or that if there's an understanding and we can put it in the ordinance of, you have to stay in the park. There's no standing on the sidewalk um, because that's impeding traffic. And so if you're doing something in the park, do it in the park, whether it's a picnic or a vigil, um, whether it's, um, you know, if it's a honk and wave, which is very popular in Vermont, that's fine, but you have to physically be in the park so that it is less distracting to drivers and you're not impeding the way. And that's, those are already rules. Um, so my recommendation, and I would like to hear more from the trustees, uh, is that we uh, investigate putting together an ordinance that talks about um, no camping, it sounds like, um, and and no physical, temporary physical infrastructure um, put up so that things are not distracting. So what if uh, somebody says, uh, I, I, I want to donate another bench? Well, that would be permanent that would infrastructure. Be permanent, so yeah. that wouldn't be yeah. under the ordinance. Okay. What if, um, what if they move the Black Lives Vigil up closer towards my salon um, so that you're away from the crosswalk in that kind of intersection right there. Like if you came up my way a little bit more. It's visible. Well, I think we're just talking about what what the ordinance would say. But yeah, keeping. I'm just saying for safety concerns, just for that area right there. What if you guys just came up a little bit further? Well, just. Are we well, let's well, let's. Just, just well, because I'm gonna be able to uh, speak in a. Well, what she's suggesting and what she's suggesting, I think, is just. That nobody can can be on the sidewalk. And well, and that's already movement on the sidewalk. That's, that's already, already exists. That already exists. Yeah, that's yeah already you can't exists. be on the sidewalk. Can't be on the sidewalk. Right? Um, that already exists. And just distracting the traffic is the other concern. But so the the point is that an ordinance would talk about, and if there's other things that you all can think of or that the public wants to recommend, but we certainly wouldn't want people camping there, <laughs> and then no temporary physical infrastructure. Permanent infrastructure would obviously be anything that we would approve, so that's okay. But if the if, if our eye and the concern is safety, then then I think that, that we write an ordinance towards that. And then there's just there's no there's no permit process. It's just don't put don't put stuff on tribute. I like your suggestion. Oh, thank you, Jeffrey. Isn't that in the ordinance already? Um, See that Tom provided this ordinance for village green parks and public places in our packet. You know, uh, no bicycles, no motor vehicles, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's for the green. Amended? Is what you're saying? I thought that one was just for the green. Am I, I'm, it's totally possible I'm wrong. That's it says green parks and public places. Green, village green which parks and Title IX. Title IX, chapter which? 95, chapter 9. Look at you. If anybody speaks to vendors, solicitations, that kind of thing, but it doesn't. Aside from vendors and solicitors, I don't think it really addresses uh, much else. Aside it's maybe camping, ninety that what? Thing. Certain it's activities on the target. Oh, okay. you can't tight rope on the green with, between the trees. So, right. no, nothing that's going to damage. 
property. property. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't say anything about, well, of course, you can put up temporary structures on the village green. With a permit. Yeah, with a permit. But it's allowed. So this would be, you can't even have a permit to put something up because of no, a safety concern. Hmm. And it would specifically, I, I mean, of course, we could extend it to Tribu as well because we're talking about having consistency. And these general provisions that you're talking about here are ones that can be uh, changed by permits, permitting. I yeah. Mean, this talk, I mean, <laughs> this talks about organized activities um, for any of them, you know. Um, it, require, it just means it requires a permit to happen. It can't happen yeah. without a permit. So we can create an ordinance that says in Tribu and Teagle's Landing there are no there are no temporary structures allowed, no camping. We, yeah, we could do that. And if there's something else that, and we can, between now and next month, have lawyers look it over and more input and all of those sorts of things. Okay. You have the trustees. Gabe, Brenda? Mm -hmm. okay. Can I ask a, a question? Because yeah. I've lived across 14 years. I have not seen many demonstrations at all. but. Anything that you, there's, there's no real place to have infrastructure there. The most, besides the time after George Floyd's uh, murder, the most people that I ever see are the kids from Zach's place come over and they play games, they play, you know, okay. they kick a ball rack. Peggy, I just want to make it, sure that I've got all the comments, because we're about to go to you guys. I just want to make sure that we've got oh, okay. all this. Yeah. I, yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's, I've got this. Did you, I just want to make sure the trustees, did you have any other input on that I idea? I want to say that, you know, it's Tribute Park. I've been only three years, but I live so right across from the day. I, I can see Tribute Park. It's 50 feet from my door. I've never seen a problem there ever. Okay. Uh, and if it's traditionally park, and I don't use the word tradition because, you know, mm -hmm. Woodstock is a place of many traditions. And I'm not part of that. I've only been here since 2019, lived here. But it seems like that park should be a place for freedom of speech and for people, Black Lives Matter, or anybody else, as long as it's not a big crowd, has obstructions, has too much traffic oh, concerns and stuff. Yeah, I don't think that's yeah. what we're talking I just, about. I don't know, we're okay, I got it. I just want to say that that's, I think that's important. It's important to me as a citizen, so anyway. Okay, well, what do you think about an ordinance that prohibits temporary physical I think if this ordinance needs to be amended, it, it could be, yeah. So taking that ordinance, and we can talk to lawyers about, and Robbie, about specifically where it goes in. Yeah. Um, and so we can have it ready for the next meeting to either approve or not approve or change. Right. Sounds good. Okay. So is there any other comments or ideas or thoughts from the trustees on that? Okay. Public comment. Bring it on, guys. And, and just well, make sure you come up to the front, please, so that the Zoom folks can hear you. I, I guess I'm a little confused. I, I think an ordinance could be a good thing that's... Peggy Fraser, um, village, um, and a neighbor of Dale's. You can sit. Um, I, I just think there haven't been many demonstrations there. I've lived there 14 years. I mean, this has been uh, a traumatic time in our country, um, and this was a response initially that was bigger. And I heard that there were people that were up on, on the green too, because I wouldn't want to see anybody restricted. But we're not, we're not so, so we're not, the, so I'm a little puzzled because I don't know where you put stuff on Tribune Park anyway, between everything that's already there, and uh, including the beautiful trees that I think were part of the initial park donation for Mr. Mm -hmm. Tribune to create the park. Having, having said that, we are, we, we have not seen any kind of problem with traffic. We wondered when we were not sure what the concern was, was it about the beeping of horns, uh, which is kind of a Vermont thing. So Charlotte, who has been posting, has specifically said, just wave. Nice. Um, you know, as, as some way to say if that was the problem, because we didn't know what the problem was. Um, but I think if there's an ordinance that says you can't be putting these things on the green, it makes sense because, well, and I don't know why you would anyway, but you know, but anyway, um, this has been a very small group. And of course, we have to take our break when it's 
10 degrees below zero. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So Rick. thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Sure. Absolutely. And as a side note, thank you also for the Puppies and Pooches event, which was a great success. <laughs> and we do have to have a permit. But I have never noticed that we had to say how many because we don't know in advance how many spectators we've ever get. Mm -hmm. We can guess yeah. and we talk broadly yeah, we about that. We ask people to guess, estimate. Yeah. Estimate. estimate. Yeah. yeah. Is there any other public comment about this topic? Yeah, come on up. So we'll make sure you're close enough to the microphone. Excuse me. Careful. I sat too long. Oh, that's okay. Legs falling asleep? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my comment is, it sounds like you're going to put this over again until next time. What, what is the problem? Why you voted on everything else tonight? Because it, it because we need to, to create an ordinance. An ordinance needs to be we need to run by our lawyer and make sure the ordinance. Is, okay. And yeah. it, but that's that's why, and then it'll, we'll bring it up again. And uh, the discussion's been progressing, so that's. So we are. All right. Well, it's just painful to sit through these for such. We're always the last on the agenda and just sitting here. It's, be the first? Okay. Well, you know what? We want some people from the village to be present for the next meeting <laughs> <laughs> because there's going to be a vote on the use of one of the public fu trust funds, and we actually need, <laughs> we need some to residents to raise their hands and say, yes. Fix the sidewalks. Right. Well, I'm for fixing the sidewalks. Well, then please be here. <laughs> <All> <laughs> right. okay. We won't put that on the end. We won't put that no. too All right. Too okay. Down. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Yeah, come on I, up. I, I'm Lula Noel, and I just want to clarify that oh. my understand. You want yeah. me to come up? Yeah, yeah. we just need to make sure the Zoom people can see it. Oh. <laughs> my Thank understanding you. is that based on this conversation, where we are now, mm -hmm. is we can continue doing what we're doing. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's, oh, good. That, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. That Never was going to be a permit required. Yeah, no. required. yeah. No. exactly. So we're. Unless, unless you guys are camping out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just okay. wanted to clarify. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. You're welcome, Wilson. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> is there any other public comment? Robbie, do you have public comment? No. Uh, is there any public comment on Zoom? Okay. Well, then we will, there's nothing to vote on. We will. Um, Work with us over the next month, and then uh, we'll add it to the agenda to consider an ordinance. Okay, next item is the Memorial um, and Naming Subcommittee. Um, this is a group that um, Philip Newberg is putting together. It's a working subcommittee. It is going to exist for two or three months, so it's not something that we need to do a special appointment for, but he wanted to give an update. Unfortunately, he could not be here tonight because of the change in time. Um, but this stemmed from conversations months ago about uh, people who wanted to donate items, things with memorials. Um, and so we decided that it was a good opportunity to come up with a comprehensive naming of memorial policies so that uh, it's so that we can evenly make decisions when, when people would like to donate things or name things. Um, Philip has really taken it to heart. He's put together a group of a couple of people from the town, a couple of people from the village. Um, and they will be giving, writing uh, up a recommendation for not only the village, but for the town, so it is consistent. Um, and he anticipates that he will bring that before both uh, boards in uh, December. So I uh, just wanted to give you all that update. Um, so next item on the list is uh, new business, and that is Sarah Macy's contract. Um, this was a discussion that uh, that we wanted to have, or that I wanted to have, because the select board was talking about it and wanted to get more information about um, what exactly Sarah Macy was doing for us. She's been helping with, she's a contractor that has helped with um, financial things. Um, Zoe was supposed to be on last night, but she, I think, could not make it tonight. Right. Um, so what we have is nothing really to vote on, but we wanted to get sort of an overview of exactly what she does and what the plans are for her. Um, her contract goes until the end of December, um, and it looks like it costs, according to this, about... Did you guys even not get your packets? I just noticed that. Sorry, guys. It's all the time I don't want paper packets. Oh, okay. That's fine. Um, I could have given it to them. Um, so she costs 
She's about $14,000, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and so she has been working with Zoe, working with the Finance Committee, and I wanted for the trustees, since we pay part of this, the majority of it obviously gets paid for by the town, but just so we know what that is and what what she's doing and sort of what the end game is with her as a contractor. If we anticipate that ending in December or if we anticipate that we're going to need her again in the new year. Do you have any of that information? <laughs> Um, I would anticipate needing her in the new year. Okay. Needing her for how long? Yeah. I wouldn't think it's ex nearly as extensive as this, mm -hmm. but I think um, you're in closeout, um, pot potentially some help with um, capital fund allocations um, and audit preparations would be the three big things that I can think of. And uh, I would say that, you know, I, I, this, estimating that, you know, it'd be about a third of this current okay. contract. So you would anticipate that would go another three months, another six months? Oh, I, I think we should do it for a year. You, you The would, contract itself. A but, year contract. But, but you can break it at any point? Yeah. Okay. This can be broken at any can you make the contract just be month to month? We don't need to. We don't need to. Don't need to do this. In other words, it's as needed. If we decided, oh, we got this covered, then we don't call and ask for her help. Okay. And and we and we wouldn't pay. So budget wise, how will we know how much it's going to cost us? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't recall what we put in the budget for this for twenty four. Okay. Well, when we talk, so it's in there. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that during budget time. Okay. And what is she? So, what has she been working on? Like, why? Why are we paying her right now? What is she doing? Uh, she's been ex doing extensive work with um, actually going back, in some cases, mm, three to four years, and correcting errors that were made. Um, and actually finding money that oh. that was reported inappropriately um, due to air, posting errors and things of that nature, which has created a, a better financial situation than we realized we were in. Is there a report that's going to show us that specifically, what she's found? Um, yeah, I think there might have been one. And maybe it wasn't shared. This was this was months ago. Uh, as you can see in the appendix of this contract, which I, I don't know what page that's on. Um, let's see. This starts on page 64. Um, but in the appendix, you know, um, a lot of work is done in April, June, and September. Um, and um, so I think early on there was a report that I happened to see about the, the findings of things and straightening them, straightening them out. Um, oh, and she has a max amount. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you would know for budget purposes. Right. Right. Well, it'd be interesting to know, you know, where these errors are being made. More than interesting, I think it's important, and, and and what the results are, what she's found in terms of yeah, what you just well, told us. I, I, don't, just, I don't recall. That's just part of her work. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think we should fixate on that. There's a lot of routine improvements that she's made. Um, I don't want to fixate, Tom, but I I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but what I'm saying is she's doing a lot more than just that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. I get that. But. I think that if we could find out what was found, yeah. I, I haven't seen any sort of report that just says these errors were found, this money was found that belonged here, this was found, anything of that nature. Yeah. If that exists, could we, <coughs> as a board, could we be entitled to see it? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. But it's going to be, you know, 
it's going to be mundane, it's going to be detailed, and be, well, I don't know about that. Um, Could it be, so be prepared for a long-winded explanation. Well, you know, if they think, and if they think if you want to review something like that, we should have Sarah yeah, we'll you. actually present that. I think we should have her yeah. because yeah. she yeah. Really, yeah. Really, have her really presented. Really and, and I think what we'd be interested in is highlights. Not I found a nine dollar yeah. error. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, but the, the fourteen thousand dollar error. You know. Yeah, the numbers were larger than that. Larger than that. Yeah. Yeah. I understand oh, that there were some larger numbers. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know exactly what they are. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. have that occur. Is that something that could happen in October or November? Let's see if she's available. Okay. I'll leave that up to you. You know what? I'm, I'm, the problem with doing that is it would be nice to do it for both. Well, well I mean, we could have a joint meeting and, yeah, and have them. Yeah. It could that be joint. Be way to do it. it could be joint. Yeah. But this is more than a joint meeting. Well, because they're always tough to get together. Yeah, well, I we can, I mean, budget season. but that could be Let's something try. where we can we can jump onto the first or oh, last thirty go. minutes. We can jump on the first thirty minutes of their meeting, or they can jump right. on the first yeah. thirty minutes of our okay. meeting and just Good do idea. it, get it done. And, and I'd suggest November at the earliest. Yeah, and of course we've moved our November meeting. We yeah. Yes, because it's on election day. Oh, it's election day. Yeah, so, so we don't have to be up on the stage anymore. When, right. when, 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 we moved it to the next day, I believe. We can find it. Uh, okay. The eighth, the ninth. Yeah, I believe we just moved it to that Wednesday. Yeah, we moved it to the ninth. Okay. Um, trustees, do you have any other questions about Sarah's contract? Mm, no. Okay. Public comment. When is the only one left? Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, the next item on the agenda is something that I added on, which is oh, Halloween on High Street. It's everybody's favorite time of the year. Yeah. Um, so uh, in past years, for those of you who are not familiar, um, High Street gets closed down. High Street, Golf, uh, Maple, a little bit of Cross, um, and there's trick-or-treating. Um, in past years, we have provided some money for the candy um, because the people that live there bear the burden of it and they spend a lot of money on candy. Last year we approved $750 to, out of our funds for candy and then the, tr the town select board also approved $750 for a total of $1,500. Um, we literally just went to BJ's, bought a lot of things and then luckily my dad was in town and he helped me deliver lots of candy. Can we vote on that tonight? Yes, I would like to vote on that tonight. Um, are there any questions about that? Public comment about that? Do you have any concerns? When he looks at me. No. no. Okay. Robbie wants to get out of here. It's fine. Um, you started my day with donuts, so oh. my tiredness is your fault. Um, <laughs> so I would entertain a motion to allot $750. Um, from trustee funds, I believe we have a holiday we have a holiday fund that we could take the money out of the holiday decorations yes. fund. So, so I would uh, I would budget. move that we take it out of that fund. It is budgeted; it's not coming out of anywhere else. So seven hundred fifty dollars of the village trustees fund, uh, village decorate decoration decoration fund. Thank you, uh, and that we use it for candy to distribute to the houses on High Maple Cross and Golf for yeah. Halloween. And recommend that the select board. And we recommend. Recommend to the select board that they follow. This yes. As well. Yes. As the whole town enjoys this. Everybody does. Uh, would you like to make that motion? I, I, move, move. I move the motion as, as you just said. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Any aye. opposed? Nay. Nay. No. None. Okay. okay. Motion is carried. Uh, next item is approval of minutes. Oh, yes. Um, we, have, we have one other item. Oh, we do? Under other business. We, we wanted to give, oh, yes, that's right. we I'm wanted so to sorry, give an update Gabe. on the uh, town manager search. Yes, Gabe. How about it? Okay. So um, we're looking to publish uh, the, uh, the uh, posting for the, uh, for the town, uh, the municipal manager job. And uh, that's... Uh, Right now, Dominic is targeting end of week to have it up on our website. Starts there, and then uh, the publications that are going to be 
uh, also used to advertise this position would be the uh, Upper Valley News, the Vermont Standard. Uh, of course, we're going to be using LinkedIn as well. And uh, there might be some other social media that, that he'll consider between now and, and then. Um, but essentially, Upper Valley News, Vermont Standard, and uh, LinkedIn. And obviously, our website, as I mentioned, uh, targeting the end of week. Uh, the next meeting for the committee that is reviewing the resumes and also involved in the interview process, uh, that is now scheduled, that is scheduled, that meeting is scheduled on October 13th. It's going to be a Zoom session. Um, and uh, select, uh, we're going we're gonna to look at uh, select candidates to be interviewed in the first round. The first round of interviews is now scheduled for uh, Tuesday, October 25th, and, uh, roughly between 9 and 2.30 on that day. And then Thursday, the 27th, uh, roughly between 9 and 2.30. Further details will be forthcoming. But that is, that is right now what we have scheduled. So if there's any shift in that, um, we'll, we'll let everyone know. And then the goal will be to, um, to have the committee's work completed by the end of October. So um, the hope still is that we'll have, uh, we'll have a candidate you know, before year end and uh, you know, targeting uh, hopefully uh, in the new year to have somebody on board. And so we're, we're, uh, that's our plan right now. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding that plan for the search? So you, uh, you hope to have a candidate um, for the two boards to interview? Before? Yes. So in this year, not in this year. In, in this year. Okay. So yes, the committee worked to conclude by the end of October, so in this year. And, um, and I think I did mention the resume review process, so that's, that's going to be the first piece of it, and then the first round of interviews, and, and, then, uh, and then the committee work should be concluded at that point. Wonderful. Tom, go ahead, please. If I mm -hmm. missed something. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you missed this. OK. Uh, the, the ads are going to appear in um, manager-related organizations, like okay. the International City Managers yes, that's Association true, yes. and the statewide organizations. Correct. Okay. Correct. And that's part of, part of the uh, the networking strategy that, that uh, Dominic has, has offered yeah. us. So, uh, yes. Yeah, because that's very yeah. market oriented. You know, it hits the market that. Right. The, where the, so I, I, was the being very, I was being very generic with social media, but that, that would be, uh, that would yeah, be yeah. under that moniker. Yeah. Okay. And um, one of the things, if you don't mind me adding, no, okay. um, is that uh, Dominic, who's our consultant, um, also said that word of mouth is huge on this. So once it hits the, the website and once it hits, you know, Indeed and all these places that it's going to hit, um, he has encouraged us all to put it on our own social media and to share it widely because you never know who's on your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, whatever it happens to be. Um, so, so once it goes live, um, we really want everybody in Woodstock and we'll make sure that when this goes out on the listserv that, that it's in there, like please share it, share it widely. We don't, we don't know where our next town manager is going to come from. So, um, as much as we can share it, that would be great. And we have a, we have copies for those that are still here <laughs> on, the, on the desk uh, on the way out. So we, we're, we're, uh, we're able to distribute these at this point. We have a S final, so um, it's available to any any citizen who wants to read it in advance of the posting on. And the apply. Bio. Sure, or they, they know anyone. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Uh, so now we're moving on. Thank yes. you, Dave. Uh, to approval of the minutes, and I'm just going to turn straight to Jeffrey because I can't. I'm, I'm, Stop I'm, it. I'm afraid I've got to disappoint you, Stop it, Jeffrey. I, I just can't believe it. It's Mickey. I can't find an error. Uh oh. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I had COVID early in the <laughs> I'm wondering if that's maybe too foggy. You know, 
But Nikki, you're doing a fabulous job as usual. I couldn't find an error. Perhaps one of the other trustees did. I did not. I couldn't find a grammar oh. error or two. Darn it. Huh. Anybody else dare to have any errors? No? Okay. I'll keep looking. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep looking. Yeah, I'm sure you will let me you know if you find anything. Yeah, I will. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes for, uh, that is the, what is that? August, no, good Lord. August 9th, um, and, wait, there's two August 9th? Yeah, the one was joint. Oh, August. one is a joint, and one is the... Not joint. So okay. As presented. Yes. Second. Sure. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, I would also entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. No. Oh, thanks, guys. Great job. Oh, yeah. At 8 50. 8 50. Ending the meeting.